always have a unique character like salt. Its presence is not felt, but its absence makes all things tasteless. This famous quote truly describes the place and role salt has in our day-to-day -day cooking. However, as much as salt is important to make our taste food tasty, consumption of excess salt not only makes your dishes bitter and unpalatable, it is also extremely bad for your health. Hi, I'm Dr. Neha Saul Karunta from Social Media and Van Webinar Management Team of Nutrition Society of India, Mumbai Chapter. As many of you may be aware, second week of March is celebrated as Salt Awareness Week. So before we go on to understand why we need an entire week to create awareness about salt, let's first understand what exactly is salt and do we really need to eat salt. So chemically, salt is sodium chloride. It is 40% sodium and 60% chloride. When everybody talks about reducing salt, we are essentially talking about reducing the intake of sodium component of salt majorly. But before we talk about reduction, let's see if there is any function of sodium in our body. So we need sodium in very, very small quantities. These small quantities of sodium is required for proper nerve conduction, for contraction and relaxation of muscles, and to maintain the fluid and electrolyte balance of the body. So how much of sodium do you require on a day-to-day -day basis? National Institute of Nutrition, ICMR, recommends that one person who is completely healthy can take 2000 milligrams per day of sodium, which translates to 5 grams of salt in a day. Beyond a certain point, sodium or salt is very bad for your health. As all of you all may be aware that the prevalence of hypertension or high blood pressure is on a rise and intake of high sodium food or high salt food on a regular basis makes you at an increased risk of contracting or developing hypertension. Very high levels of blood pressure over a period of time can result into a severe heart disease. So therefore we need to keep a salt or sodium intakes into a, a particular restricted levels. Also, uh, people who are uh, suffering from kidney disease need to have low sodium diets and a low sodium diet over a period of time also helps you keep your kidneys healthy. High amount of sodium is also known to affect the absorption of other electrolytes in the body including calcium. Now, high intake of salt will lead to increased secretion of calcium in the urine which may in, in turn lead to a reduced amount of calcium in the blood. Now, if the amount of calcium in the blood is reduced, what will happen is that calcium would be leached off from the bone. And over a period of time, this excess leaching of calcium from bone to maintain your blood levels will lead to brittle bones and give rise to osteoporosis. So again, high sodium is not just bad for your heart and kidneys, it's also bad for your bones also and overall a low sodium and a low salt diet makes the diet quality better and overall it's very good for your health apart from that cancer research has shown that a very high intake of salt makes you at a higher risk of stomach cancer so a low salt diet is always very important so it's very important that we reduce the intake of sodium or salt in our diet and hence the salt awareness week the theme for Salt Awareness Week this year is more flavor, less salt. So when we talk about reducing salt, we need to not only reduce the actual salt intake in our diets, but also need to reduce the intake of hidden sources of sodium in our diet, which we may not be aware are actually sources of sodium. So let's talk about which are the obvious sources of very high salt food in our diet. Now salt, as many of you may know, acts as preservatives and therefore all preserved foods such as pickled, canned food, ready to eat food, ready to use salad dressings are all high in salt. Uh, packaged foods, ready to eat chips, salted snacks, they are all high snack, salt foods. Your tomato ketchup, red and green chilli sauce or any other ready to use market bought sauce is high in salt. Even soy sauce is very high in salt content. 
Apart from these obvious sources of salt, when we talk about reducing salt intake, we need to talk about the not so obvious sources of sodium in our diet. Foods such as olives are very high in salt. Now you'd say, why is olives very high in salt? Now olives that are available specifically in India are either bottled or canned in brine, which is salt water. Thereby these olives absorb certain amount of salt from brine making them very high salt food um, your breakfast cereals such as corn flakes are very high in sodium some of the salty chocolates like that are high in salt cheese preserved meats and dry fishes are also high sources of salt and sodium so baking soda and baking powder which we use as a leavening agent in almost all our baked baked items such as breads, biscuits, cakes and even sometimes uh, as a leavening agent for making our steamed dough class, uh, is a sodium product. So if you are using uh, uh, baking soda or baking powder and you are asked to go on a low salt or low sodium diet, you need to monitor your intake of any food that has baking soda or baking powder. Your MSG or Ajinomoto that is commonly used in Chinese cooking is again a sodium product. Papar is another high source of salt and sodium in that. So apart from salt which is added to make uh, papar, an integral component or an integral ingredient that is used to make papar is known as papar khar. Now papar khar is a combination of baking soda and baking powder. Thereby making papar not just a very high uh, salt product because of the salt that is added to it. It's a very high sodium product because of the papad khar also which is added to it. Even the instant noodles, the two minute popcorns that we buy from market, they are all very high salt or sodium food. So now that you know that these obvious and some not so obvious high sodium and high salt food, let's talk about how do we restrict or reduce salt intake in our diet. First and foremost, say an absolute no to table salt. Do not add salt to your cut fruits, cut vegetables or your fruit juices. Instead of using store bought salad dressings, make your salad dressings at home. Cook your meals instead of using ready to eat meals. Instead of using um, the ready to use uh, snack items, make your snacks at home. Okay. Uh, as per the theme of Salt Awareness Week this year, it's also important that when we make meals at home, we use less salt in our food. You might say that, you know, how do I make food tasty if I am using less salt while cooking? Well, use lemon, citrus food or your berries in your salads. They add an extra zing and flavor to your salads. Uh, even your curries, you can make them tasty by either using these foods or use your uh, ginger, garlic, onions, spices such as pepper, cinnamon, cloves, star anise to add that extra flavor to your low salt food. Use of fresh herbs instead of cheese and olives adds that extra zinc to your pizzas, pastas and your salads. To make your Chinese foods more flavor, instead of using Ajinomoto, use more of garlic and spring onions. Uh, when you are shopping for groceries, always, always, always read for food label for the sodium in content of the food. In the end, on behalf of Nutrition Society of India Mumbai chapter, I would like to again reiterate that the incidence of hypertension, kidney disease and stomach cancer is on rise. So, a low salt or a low sodium diet will definitely help you not just keep yourself healthy but also reduce your risk of contracting these diseases. So, from today onwards, adopt the motto. More flavor, less salt. Thank you.